In this video, we're going to go over exposing your work and gaining a following through toy photography. How's it going guys? So quick disclaimer, this is not a gain followers quick scam. That's not what this video is about. <laughs> Definitely is not. If you're looking to grow your account and to expose your work to as many people as possible uh, with toy photography, it is definitely going to take some work and it's not going to happen overnight. So keep that in mind while you're watching this video. But in this video, we are going to talk about some ways that have really helped me out with growing my account and exposing my work to a wider audience. So again, this is not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's just, it's just not. I started toy photography back in 2014 and this photo from 2017 got only 60 likes. And you know what? That's okay. That means if I went around and took my photo and I went to 60 people, that's a lot of people. That's like more people than I even know. I went around to all those 60 people and showed them, hey, look at my picture. Hey, look at my picture. Hey, look at my picture. And every single one of those 60 people were like, whoa, that is a pretty sweet picture. I like that. That right there is pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know where I would be able to do that for that to actually happen, except for here on Instagram or wherever you're posting it. So 60 likes is actually a lot of people liking your photo. So if you're expecting to get hundreds and thousands of likes right away, you're just not being totally realistic. Plus the Instagram algorithm, we all know it's kind of a total piece of crap, but um, it's all right, we can fight that. We can beat that algorithm. And besides, toy photography is about the love we have for these characters and bringing them to life with these toys, you know? And the art form alone is enough to make me happy and enough to make me do it every single day. And I hope it's the same for you. But this video uh, will definitely help with exposing your art as much as you possibly can. So number one being focusing on your work. Focusing on the quality of your toy photos to make them the best they could possibly be. The stronger your quality of your photos are, naturally the more engagement you're gonna get on them, obviously. <laughs> so uh, that's why it's super important to really just push yourself, challenge yourself, try new things, experiment, constantly shoot and do new things with toy photography because every time you do that, every time you shoot, you're going to learn and you're going to improve. So just keep shooting, keep doing what you love. Plus, I might have quite a few tutorials on this YouTube channel that might help with that as well. Just, uh, just saying. Number two being posting on Instagram, or how you post on Instagram, because the way you post and the way you time your post and all of that stuff does actually make a difference. So make sure you put some hashtags in your posts when you post your photos. Also, the hashtags are actually very important. It puts your photos into certain categories for people to see them and people that are specifically interested in whatever subject those hashtags are under. So if you're posting toy photography, use hashtag toy photography. Uh, if you're posting a Star Wars toy photo, use hashtag Star Wars, hashtag Star Wars Black Series, hashtag whatever. You know, you're putting your photos into categories in which people can see them through those categories. So it's really important to put them in there. So if you don't really use a hashtag, it's just kinda gonna post onto your account and it's gonna be very, very difficult for anyone who's not already following you to see your photos. So I'd recommend taking a look at some of the hashtags that I use, I use a ton of them. Most of the time they are different according to which photo I am posting. So definitely take a look at different ones that I'm using, take a look at different ones that everybody's using. You could get some new ideas that way. Definitely look into that. It's a very, very easy thing just to really get your photos out there just a little bit. The timing of when you post your photos is also very important as well. So the first maybe hour or two after the time you actually click post is probably going to be the most important time for your post. After the first couple hours or so, um, it's going to be way down on a lot of people's feed and most likely won't really be seen a whole lot after then. So that first couple hours is so important. So make sure when you post your photos, it's at a good time in which you think a lot of people will be on their phones looking at photos. So if you post your photo at like 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, most likely <laughs> people are sleeping and might not really see your photo at that current time. But if you, you know, you try to post it around, I like to post my photos around noon. But 
other times work better for other people. But as long as it's a time of day where you think that other people will be on their phones able to look at the picture, that's probably a good time to do it. I also try to make the caption of my posts look as organized and maybe professional as possible, I don't know. But I definitely like to add a little bit of personality into the caption of my photo, a little bit of why I like this photo, why it was difficult, why it was fun, that kind of thing. Uh, I also just like to see a little bit of background behind each photo too. So whenever someone adds a little bit of like a interesting caption about this specific photo, I'm usually gonna read it because I think it's interesting and I like to learn a little bit more about what was going on up here when the photo was taken or who knows. Also, take advantage of the swipe feature on the Instagram posts as well, just because, you know, if you add like maybe just a quick little behind the scenes video of how your setup looked or just, or maybe even just like a little behind the scenes photo of what your setup looked like, because I definitely, personally, I love to see exactly, like if I see the photo, I'm like, wow, that was cool. How did that look behind the camera? And then I swipe, there it is, perfect. Uh, and then you're also kind of teaching people too, like a little bit about what you did and, and how you achieved this photo all at the same time. And I think that's really interesting. And I think most people in general love to see the behind the scenes of the photo. Uh, so I think that's really important. Even if it's just, okay, you took the photo, take your phone out, boom, take a quick little picture of what the setup or a video was. I think that uh, really makes the post that much stronger and that much more engaging for people to, to like it and to want to follow, you know? Also, tag your friends in your photos. Tag some other toy photographers that you admire in your photos too, because when you're tagging them, it's kind of showing them that, hey, I like you and I care about your opinion and I really want you to see my photo. So I'm tagging you in this photo. I hope you see it and I hope you like it. I think it's totally awesome. And I get tagged in photos all the time and you know what? I like it, I love it. I, I wanna see what people are doing. And the fact that people care about my opinion and they want me to see their photo, I think that's amazing. It makes me feel really good. So I definitely think it's cool to tag people in your posts to get them to see it. Also, and this is a big one, tag the toy companies, tag other companies, tag celebrities in your photos that might be in your toy pick. I've seen a lot of really amazing stories where people have tagged celebrities in their toy photos and the celebrities see them and then they share them and it's just like a huge thing, like how cool is that? I would love to take a picture of Superman, tag Henry Cavill in it, and then have him say, wow, that's awesome and share it. I'd probably lose my mind if that happened. <laughs> but also tagging different companies in your photos is really, really important too. Like, like that one time I took some pictures of Power Rangers with Mountain Dew and I tagged Mountain Dew and you know what, Mountain Dew saw that and they liked it and they sent me stuff. Now I kind of have this really cool professional relationship with Mountain Dew, which has been really, really great. So, so definitely tag and mention companies, celebrities, other big accounts in your photos, because you never know, you never know. So Instagram is home to, you know, the toy photography community, and it is awesome. There are so many of us on Instagram, all there for the same reason. It's like the coolest thing to be a part of. So engage, interact. Follow other toy photographers, comment on their photos, like their photos, DM them and say that their work is awesome, and just show some love. Engaging with the toy photography community will get your name out there. And plus it's awesome talking with other like-minded people doing the same things that you do and loving the same things you love. It's honestly one of the coolest and probably one of my favorite parts about toy photography in general is just being a part of this community and being among other really awesome people doing the same things. And also, if you want other people to like, comment, and engage on your photos, it's only right that you do the same for them too, you know? So do your best to engage and just really be a part and be a full-on member of this toy photography community. Because really, doing that is what makes this community what it is. So how do I find other toy photographers to engage with? One of the first places to go is go to some really awesome toy photography feature accounts, like my boys at the Star Wars Time Show. Those guys are amazing, awesome people. Their podcast is fantastic, and they do so much for the toy photography community just as it is. But they're constantly posting and sharing other artists uh, specifically, most often, toy photography. I can't tell you how many times I've been scrolling and I see a post from Star Wars Time Show and I'm like, wow, that is an awesome Star Wars shot. And then I go to that person's page and I'm like, wow, I don't follow them. And then I follow them because their work is awesome and I want to follow. 
I can't tell you how many times it's happened, like all the time. There's a lot of other feature pages very similar to that. Like the Toy Pit community, those guys are awesome. Really, really great people there. Really just doing everything they can to just help the, the, the community. And that's it, simply for helping the community. It's really, really cool. Uh, you know, the Star Wars Black Series feature page. Uh, and uh, SH Figure Arts fans, uh, another really great page. Really great people running those pages. Follow those pages. Find other artists and photographers that way. Um, and then it's just downhill from there. And also with all those pages, if you use the right hashtags when you post or if you follow their whatever their rules are for being featured, you could get featured too. And then that's a little bit of awesome exposure right there. Definitely, definitely do that. <laughs> And then a lot of these pages will do like uh, toy photography liking sessions or these special sessions where everyone will use a very specific hashtag and post all at the exact same time. And if you decide to do that, you can also go into that hashtag and also like and support, uh, comment every single other post, another person who's participating in the session. And it's all just kind of like liking and, and supporting each other's stuff. And it's really cool. It's just like a very special way to help support each other all at the same time. It's really awesome. The Toy Pit community page does that multiple times a week, I'm pretty sure. So if you go over to that page, I'm sure you'll find different sessions they're posting. And then all the rules to do those are usually right in the comments. It's really cool. I definitely recommend doing that. So making your mark and just being a part of the toy photography community is really a very important part about being a toy photographer, really. Uh, honestly, I would be nowhere without this community. I've learned so much from other people in this community. So it's really important to just be a part of the community. Plus, it's just so awesome to, it, it feels so great to be a part of such a cool group of people. So it really does, it's awesome. Also, if you're posting on Instagram, you know, it's really, really good to utilize all of what Instagram offers. It's not just posting photos. I mean, posting your photos is, is, is the way to go. You definitely gotta do that. But there's a lot of other really cool things that Instagram has that does help kind of uh, get a reach to new people and, you know, expose your work to new people. And that's really what you gotta do if you want to grow online, is exposing your work to new people. Not just the same awesome people that are seeing your work regularly. So going live on Instagram is really fun. It's really easy. It requires no prep. You just turn it on and then you just talk and you go. Also, use Instagram Reels. Use Instagram Reels. It's actually the best thing that Instagram has ever done. I know it's kind of copying TikTok, but who cares? <laughs> if you're making a cool little engaging video and putting it on Instagram Reels about your toy photography, uh, it's gonna go into this Reels section. So anybody who's scrolling on the Reels, you could potentially, your video could potentially show up while they're scrolling and uh, your work could be exposed to whole new people. It's really the best thing that Instagram has as far as reaching new people to follow you and to see your work. So collaborating with other toy photographers is such an amazing thing to do. Plus it's a ton of fun. It is a perfect way to kind of cross promote each other and expose yourselves to each other's different audiences, which is just really, really a smart thing to do. You know, if there's somebody you admire on Instagram or someone's work that you like on Instagram, send them a DM, reach out to them and see if they're up for collaborating. And what's great about collaborating with other people is that there are no rules. You can post similar photos with a theme of a specific character, of a specific kind of effect, or you can even go live together at the same time and cross promote that way too. Uh, there's so many different ways you can do it and there is no good specific way to do it. And it's mutually beneficial, which is really, really awesome. So reach out to somebody and see if they're up for collaborating. And if for any reason they are unable to collaborate with you for whatever reason it may be, there's probably a million different reasons why. Don't feel bad. People have tons of things going on in their lives that we don't necessarily know anything about. So if they're up for it, great. If not, that's okay too. So if you're really looking to, to grow as a toy photographer and to expose your work to as many people as possible, you definitely gotta move beyond just Instagram. Uh, Instagram is awesome, yeah, because that is primarily where the toy photography community lives. But the world is just way too dang big to just stick to one thing, you know? There are potential millions and billions of fans of toy photography out there that just don't know it yet. 
And the reason why they don't know it is because they, they haven't been exposed to toy photography before. So it's our job, it's up to us to expose them and show them what toy photography is. So one place to go with your toy photography is going to YouTube. Make a YouTube channel. YouTube is huge. YouTube is so massive. There are so many millions of people on YouTube and watching YouTube every single day. And so many uh, opportunities have arisen for me uh, just since I've made my YouTube channel in the last few years. Uh, back in 2019, this page called Bored Panda found my YouTube channel and shared it on uh, on Facebook. And it got like 18 million views and my accounts kind of grew like crazy. I'm sure a lot of you might remember that. Um, but uh, it was huge and such an amazing opportunity for me only all because... I made a YouTube channel and I was putting my content on YouTube and they found it that way. So uh, I can't recommend doing a YouTube any more than that. There's so many people on there. It can definitely be a lot of work if you're looking to really make some quality videos, that kind of thing, but it's totally worth it. It's totally worth it. I'm on YouTube right now making this video and uh, it's great. <laughs> it's great. So definitely try that. Make a YouTube channel. Another place to go is to TikTok. Make a TikTok. TikTok is so massive right now. It is like the biggest app ever right now. There are millions and billions of people on it. Also watching every day. It takes barely any time to go and make uh, an interesting, engaging 15 second video that can go viral. <laughs> and so many people will see your work that way. I know so many toy photographers that have gone crazy on TikTok and have gained literally hundreds of thousands of followers within just a few months. Last year in 2020 when I started making a TikTok, my TikTok grew like crazy and I had over 200,000 followers on there in like <laughs> only a few months, which was just so crazy and a lot of really, really great opportunities came from just making a stinking TikTok. <laughs> but also keep in mind, TikTok is very, very weird, kind of like Instagram with their algorithm. It's even weirder. Like, <laughs> you can go and have 200,000 followers, and then your video can get like six views, which doesn't make any sense, especially when you have that many followers. So de just be aware of that happening because you never know what the heck's gonna happen on TikTok. It is a weird place. I recently actually deleted my TikTok and started a new one from scratch just because. I didn't know what the heck was going on and I just wanted to start over again. So TikTok is great, just be aware of how weird their algorithm or whatever the heck they do over there. Just be aware of how weird that is and how that might happen. There are so many places on the internet where people are looking at stuff and where people can see a picture, a toy photography picture and be like, wow, that's cool. I want to follow this artist, you know? So put them on Facebook, Put make a Facebook page, make a, a join a Facebook group that does toy photography or a Facebook group that revolves around action figures or post it on Reddit or who knows? There's so many places for you to put your artwork your toy photography artwork online for other people to see it and for you to grow. And of course, when you do that, always link up all of your accounts all together, you know, in your link and bio. Put your Instagram, put your TikTok, put your YouTube, so then everywhere is all connected and you have this kind of network. You know, it's, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to do. The world is just way too big for you to stay just on Instagram. Go and find other different websites to put your work. Put them on Pinterest. Who knows, you know? Uh, there's so many places. If you're really looking to grow your accounts, multiple accounts, you gotta move just beyond Instagram. Another thing that's very difficult for us to kind of get a hold of, especially for us big super fans, is about the general population of people. The general population of people aren't as hardcore into this stuff as we are, but the general population will still see a toy photo and be like, wow, that's really cool. This person made this with action figures. That's cool. So you got to really think about the general population and what they might be into. So for instance, if you were to take a picture with Darth Vader, everybody's going to know that and be like, oh, cool, Darth Vader. I love Darth Vader. He's a household name. Everybody knows Darth Vader. But if you take a picture of, of Cad Bane, you know, us, we see that and be like, awesome, I love Cad Bane, he is so cool. But, you know, if I were to show that picture to my mom, she'd be like, oh, that's cool, who's that guy? But if I showed a picture of Darth Vader to my mom, she'd be like, oh, cool, Darth Vader, I know Darth Vader. So, you gotta really think, if you're really trying to make your post uh, be as big as it can possibly be, you gotta think about the, the heavy fans, you know, like us, 
and the other toy photographers, but you also got to think about the other billions of people who are part of just the general population who might not be as hardcore into that. And I'm not saying that you can't take a picture of Cad Bane. I'm going to do the same thing I have before because he's awesome. But just keep in mind that if you were to take a photo with very, very recognizable characters by everyone world renowned around the entire world that everybody will know, most likely that post might do a little bit better than a post with a little bit more of an obscure character like Cad Bane, for instance. So just keep that in mind a little bit because the choice of characters you use uh, will appeal to different people and some might appeal to more people than others. Also in that regards, it's kind of good to do your best to stay up with current times. Whatever's hot right now might be the best thing to try and take photos of. Like for instance, when Mandalorian Season 2 was out, all I was doing was taking pictures of Mando and Baby Yoda. <laughs> Not only because that's what I was really obsessed with at the time because it was out and we were so excited, but the world was also kind of also really obsessed with it as well. So a photo with something that's really hot and people are really into at the moment will probably perform a little bit better than something that was about something else. So definitely try to keep that in mind. Do you actually remember like years ago when there was that like bottle cap challenge where people were like kicking the bottle cap off of a bottle and it's a big trend and people are doing it all over the internet. Uh, and then one time I was like, I wanna do that with toys. So I did one where like a Power Ranger was kicking the bottle cap off of a Mountain Dew can or Mountain Dew bottle way long ago. And that photo did way better than I expected because that was currently a big trend and probably a bunch of people who weren't really fans of toy photography but also were like looking at this trend probably saw my photo and it did pretty well. And who knows how many people I introduced toy photography to just from that photo, you know? So it's really good to try and keep up with things that are current and trendy. And I'm not saying you have to always just follow the trends. No, not at all. But you know, if you do something that is like incorporating this trend into something unique like toy photography, you're going to introduce all kinds of different people to, to your photos and toy photography in general. So we talked a lot about different things you should do to help grow your account, stuff like that. I also want to just talk about a couple things that are good to not do also. <laughs> so if you're trying to grow your account and you want you know, people to follow you, um, sometimes it's not the best thing to do to just message someone and say, can you follow me? Can you please follow me? Like, please follow me. Not gonna lie, that is gonna come off as pretty annoying to anyone who gets that message. I mean, maybe not to everybody, but most likely whoever gets that message is gonna be like, um, so a better way to really go about that, send that person a message, send them something, you know, send a nice professional sounding thing saying, hey, you know what, I really admire your work. It would mean a lot to me to get your opinion on some of my work. If you, if you had a second to check out my page, that would be really great, thank you so much. You know, just something like that. And you know, that would go a long way. Whenever I get messages like that, I'm like, Wow, thanks, that's really, really nice of you. I definitely want to look at your work. But anytime I get a message like that, instantly I'm gonna be like, yeah, heck yeah, I want to see your work. So, and that goes for, you know, you can send that message to a celebrity and who knows, maybe they'll look at it and be like, hmm, cool. And then, boom, new potential collaboration relationship, who knows? Definitely think twice before you send those kinds of messages. There's a good way to do it. And you know what, the same thing goes to different companies, toy companies that you maybe want to try and work with, that kind of thing. That's totally okay. Send them, send them an email. Send them a really nice professional email saying why you think you could help their company with your awesome photos or whatever. What's the worst they're going to say? No. Or what's the worst they're going to say? Nothing at all? <laughs> Probably that. But uh, you never know. You never know. It's always worth it. Another message to try and stay away from is just sending a message that's saying, hey, can you just share my post on my story? I'm trying to get lots of likes on it. Every toy photography on Instagram is trying to get lots of likes too. Just like you could go about that the same exact way, sending a nice professional email, maybe even requesting some kind of collaboration instead so it's mutually beneficial. But if your photos are awesome and you're really nice to people, they're going to want to share your work either way. And you know what? Go and share other people's work on your story, other people's photos on your story. And hey, maybe they'll go and do the same thing back. And if they don't share it back, you know what? You did something nice. So that's great. <laughs> and if you do end up messaging some larger accounts, some other photographers with big following or even like 
company pages, that kind of thing. And keep in mind, if for some reason you don't get a response or if you don't get a response for a really long time, never take it personally. You never know exactly what's going on in that person's life. Maybe they have so many messages and they just, they missed it by accident. Never take it hard or take it personally if you don't get a response or if it takes a long time to get a response from messaging larger accounts or messaging company social media accounts. So in the end, yeah, this video was about gaining a following, exposing your work, growing your accounts, and trying to become something bigger. But at the same time, don't get too hung up on the likes, the followers, that stuff thing. Because you know what? We're toy photographers and we take pictures of toys because we love it and because it makes us happy. And the second where the likes and the followers and that kind of thing becomes more important than the toy photography itself, that's when it's a problem. Do what you do because you love it because you enjoy it, because you have fun. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if any of these techniques really work for you. I would love to know your success stories. It always makes me so happy to know that any one of these videos could help you in any way. So thank you so much for that. I'll see you in the next video, guys.